What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. War. All right. Well, we're a day early, but not a dollar short. Welcome to Allow Me to Be Frank. Uh, uh, with the Mets heading out to California, we're, uh, and Pat's going to be going with them. Yep. We're uh, recording today on a Tuesday. As the Mets get ready to wrap up a uh, critical homestand. Yeah, it is a critical homestand. And, um, you know, prior to the series opener with the Phillies, I, you know, I had said how crucial this homestand was that they needed to kind of, you know, take advantage of the bad teams before things get tough because things get really tough um, as soon as uh, June 2nd when Thursday rolls around a 10 game road trip with the Dodgers, the Angels, the Padres. And the whole month of June is just really tough for the Mets. Well, it it does it doesn't end there. Do you, after that, they 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 have three games with the uh, with the Brewers, and they have uh, I believe they have a combined seven games overall with the Astros and the Brewers, and then uh, the only weaker opponent who isn't a weak opponent historically versus the Mets is the Miami Marlins, who they're playing a total of seven times in the month of June. They always give the Mets fits, no matter what year it is. Yeah, they made the Marlins are always a pain in the fucking ass. You know, uh, as I look at the uh, the at the uh, at the Phillies, uh, I wonder how long uh, it's going to be before Joe Girardi is uh, sitting next to you and analyzing the game. I would say uh, pretty soon. Uh, his his seat <laughs> is getting scaldingly hot. Um, now, it's it's not all his fault. It's not all his fault. I mean, the team recreated well, uh, Murphy's row, but. <laughs> Well, they 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 bumped the rotation so they could get uh, Zach Wheeler on Sunday night. Yeah. They threw uh, a guy named Bailey Falter on uh, Friday. Bailey Falter, I guess, is uh, is their uh, Thomas Jabucky. He definitely faltered. I mean, I don't know about you. You know, there's some players, pitchers, people whose names you look at, you go, no. I don't want that guy on his team for his name. That was you and Sh- and Shapaki. Oh well, yeah, he's got to he, right there. It says in his name. If you take the zap out, it's suck. <laughs> his name is suck. He had a demoralizing first big league start as you could ever have. And you should never have a second big league start unless it's for uh, a team like the uh, Phillies. <laughs> Well, the Phillies, the Mets have basically put them out to pasture this season. They've won <laughs> nine out of twelve contests with them. Uh, I believe there are 11 and a half games back of the Mets already, and we're not even into June. This is the largest they, Mets they, they, no- Go ahead. The, uh, the Phillies have a really good defense. I like how they, 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 they said, okay, let's get everyone that can match the ball. It doesn't matter what, what we do on defense. Turns out it matters what happens on defense. They're brutal defensively. Their bullpen is awful. Corey Knable's blown – Three saves, two of them to the Mets in the month of uh, in the month of May. Uh, they just really didn't address other than Canable because Canable was a good reliever prior to the season. Um, well, now he's Corey unable. He's very he's been very unable, and they just they didn't address their weaknesses. They they really didn't. They they made a rich offense richer and got two of the Mets' worst relievers, most home run prone relievers. And didn't do anything to improve the pitching staff and what's, their, or their defense. What's, what's funny to me is is just how just like, I mean, everyone just goes up there and just like tries to hit seven home, seven one home runs. And, and, and Schwarber's having a terrible season. Yeah, and he didn't even have a big series against the Nets, shockingly. Uh, Cassiano says uh, he hit that three-run homer, but he's basically done nothing. He's been struggling as well. And Bryce Harper uh, has a torn UCL and can't play the field. And I mean, he I got hasn't a prediction. Even... In, in, I got a prediction. If the Oriole, if, if the Phillies don't make any type of movement, he is going to have surgery. Yeah, I I think that's probably what's what's where it's headed. I I, I don't see him. I. Especially if you if you just if you, you, they they drop ten games below five hundred. I mean they're just gonna throw it. At a certain point you gotta just look at Bryce and go okay. 
we got to reload next year and uh, shut down Bryce Harper. Yeah, I mean, the Phillies are, are a mess, and it's clear they aren't going anywhere. Uh, and, and that's the thing. Their offense got them back in the game on uh, Sunday night. And, and Friday bull- night. And Friday night, too. And Friday night as well. And the bullpen handed it right back. You know, one thing I, I got to say I like about the Mets this year is their ability to answer. Yeah, they've done a lot of it. And right now, the lineup, Giorme, Lindor, Pete Alonzo, Marte, Nick Plummer, like, the offense has been crushing it. I mean, Nick Plummer, that, I, that, that came out of nowhere. Yeah, and he was a former first-round pick out of high school in 2015. Dealt with wrist issues early in his career. Missed the whole year in 2020 because of the pandemic. And had a really good year between double-A AA and triple-A last year. He's only 25 years old. Has a pretty good swing. Could be a dominant or rough, potentially, with uh, Travis Jankowski out for the next two months. You know, uh, you know who's probably got to be the uh, who's got the most pressure on him right now is Dom, 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 Dom. Yeah, yeah, I'd say Dom Smith. If Nick Plummer keeps hitting the way that he is, I mean, obviously Dom Smith, uh, you know, is going to lose playing time. Because if Nick Plummer keeps playing that way, when Travis Jankowski comes back, where where where's Dom Smith fit on this team? And Dom has options. Yeah. Where he does fit is that he is a, a very good glove at first base and, and allows them to use Alonzo as a DH. Um, but, you know, he just hasn't Dom, – Dom's had a couple good offensive games, but he really just hasn't put it together consistently this year. What, what surprised me, he has no power. Yeah, and that was the thing, too, last year with the injuries kind of took away his power. And, and you know, it, it was back in spring training, and I just, I just – I'm not sure, um, you know, what's going on with him right now, but it hasn't been a good start. I mean, him and J.D. Davis right now, I mean, they they got to be looking around going. You know, the two of them are, are nothing. And, of course, the Mets catcher positions like the pitcher spot in the lineup. Yeah, I guess it helps, though, now with the uh, with the D.H. It would be more of a, um, you know, it, it would hurt more if it was if it was eight hitters as it was, if you had the pitcher and the catcher spot up. I mean. That's how the Mets definitely have benefited from the uh, addition of the DH. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the Mets are going to trade for a bat at the trade deadline. And I think Wilson Contreras would be, you know, the best of both worlds, uh, you know, as a catcher and as a, um, you know, as another bat in the lineup and getting some Uh, production out of the catching position. That could happen, but I don't know if it will happen. The guy who I definitely see wearing a Mets uniform is J.D. Martinez. I just don't think the Red Sox are going to be uh, are going to be sellers. Like I, I mean, they're, they've started to climb back. I mean, it's a tough division, but mm-hmm. they lost yesterday so to the Orioles, like, ten to nothing. Uh, they're uh, I think twelve and four now since uh, Alex Cora shaved his face, and I think Trevor Story heard your slander, Frank. Yeah, <laughs> last week I think he had like as many like seven home runs in like five days or something ridiculous. Yeah, he got really hot. I mean, yeah, yeah, but. I, the, the, the Red Sox just don't look like a good team to me this year. I think they're gonna. I think they, uh, with that division, it's just too tough. I would agree with that. Uh, it's it's very they're very inconsistent from year to year. They came very close last year. I think it's gonna be another bridge year. That's just how the pattern they. the Red Sox are a funny team. If they get off to a good start, they're gonna make a push for the uh, for the World Series. If they don't, then they're gonna. To have a long, long summer in Boston, and it looks—it's starting to look like a long, long summer in Boston. I guess um, you know JD Martinez, his his deal is expiring. You know he's an older player. Like if if they aren't in contention, I guess it does make sense to trade him. But uh, like SNY proposed, I think it was I believe it was Salicata proposed. Um, you know, Mets sending Mauricio and who I forget who the other prospect was. It was one of their other top prospects. I think the top pitching prospect, which there aren't. Many, oh, Calvin Ziegler, who's like the going to be the top pitching prospect in the Mets rota- uh, the Mets farm system. He proposed trading them those two for Jake Diekman and um, and JD Martinez, and I just don't think, looking at things from a long term standpoint, that that would be too wise considering the shape that the Mets farm system's in. But it would, you know, it would help immensely, obviously, for a World Series push. But I I oh, think no, there's no. other there's other ways to go there. I think I think the people who are untru- I think the only two people who are truly untouchable are Beatty and Alvarez. 
Yeah, I'd agree with you there. Um, but Cal- Calvin Ziegler is going to be untouchable. I, I promise you. Um, he's so the, the the problem with Mauricio is he's basically Francisco Lindor. Yeah, I mean, you have Beatty coming up playing third. You have you know maybe Mauricio yeah. could play second base long term, but I don't know. I feel like maybe he'd be a he'd be a trade chip at some point. Um, you know, you can't keep everyone in. And hey, Lindor's starting to look like the player who they thought they were getting. He's top three yeah, in the National League yeah. in RBIs. And he's and he's and he's he's producing. And speaking of uh players like uh, Lindor, uh, have you has anyone looked at Javier Baez in his struggles in Detroit? He'll probably opt out after the second season, that's my guess. There's no doubt he'll opt he'll opt out. Yeah. He went to Detroit he went to Detroit to opt out and he's right now he's batting two oh three and he's striking out like uh, like uh, four and a half times out of every ten at bats. The Mets really dodged a bullet because Jeff McNeil looks like he's going to be pushing for a batting title this year or or close to it. Um, he's extremely rejuvenated, very important hitter, and and looks yeah, like an all star again. Yeah, I saw a stat this week. Uh, uh, over the weekend, he he struck out nine times and saw seventeen pitches. <sighs> That's. See, that's not how he was swinging when the Mets had him last year, but that is who the player that he is. It was like, or something like that. He struck out. He, he he saw 17 pitches this weekend and went 0 for 9. They're like a whole bunch of strikeouts. Frank, can you believe and that he, Jeff? McNeil- and he, and, uh, and it's like it's like he hasn't walked in like six weeks. No, he he's gone back right to the player that he was in Chicago. Um, yeah, yeah that's t- you see, that's the player I didn't want. He, I he, 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 he I think he would drive me would have drove me nuts. Yeah. No, that that is he's an exciting electrifying player, but he's very frustrating as well because he could strike out four times and just swing at everything out of the zone. Very wild swinger. Um Jeff McNeil already has more hits with runners in scoring position than he did all of last season. Francisco uh, Lindor has 40 RBIs which he did not get until early September of last season. Well, uh, last year the Mets had uh, 25 games, but he had more than seven or more runs. And this year they might have close to that already. Yeah, they do. They might. Have, they have definitely have at least half of that. I'm sure by now. Yeah, I, I, I think I saw the set that it was like 13 games already. The good news that is was before yesterday, so it's like so it's like 14 now. The good news is that. The Mets have a nine and a half game lead over the Braves in the NL East. Now, I don't think the Braves are going to be. I don't think they're going to go down quietly this season. I think they're mm. going to be roaring back at some point. But the Mets just—they just need to keep building that divisionally. They've never had a lead this large, I believe, you in, know, in team history at this point. Yeah. What 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 what, did, what has to happen is this: they got to figure a way for that California road trip. To do no worse than four and six. And the Angels are struggling, Frank. They've lost seven of ten. Tyler McGill, if if Tyler McGill continues on the path that he's on, where he only gets one rehab start, he's supposed to throw a live BP today, and then five days afterwards, he'd be throwing a rehab start potentially Sunday. Um, you know, you know what would please me? Besides McGill returning, what else would please you? There would be nothing more pleasing than in Anaheim. The Mets to hit the utter absolute shit out of the baseball against Noah Syndergaard. Like, make Noah Syndergaard, like, walk off the mound with his head down low in shame. That is... There's two things I want to see on the road trip. I, I want to see the Mets do no worse than four and six. That's not asking a lot. That's a losing road trip. But you know, if you go in four and six with that, with that monsters three game with those three teams, that's that's actually quite good. But one of those wins, I want them to bludgeon, bludgeon. That loud mouth piece of shit. No, it's in the guard. 
that would be something. It's either going to be he dominates them or they they whack him around. I, th- I think there's not going to be an in-between with that outing. Because right now it seems like the Stars are going to align for him to pitch in that series, which would be great. Um, four and six, though, like it is a tough road trip, but I could see a, a four-game split to a piece with the Dodgers, maybe losing two out of three to the Padres and winning two out of three from the Angels. Like I, I don't think that's unrealistic to expect, which is a five and five road trip. A, a five and five road trip would be would basically be would be tremendous. Yeah, I th- I think they would they would be very uh, you know ecstatic about that. I mean, I, I said it as it was, uh, uh, you know, Friday morning that they needed to go four and two on the homestand. They've gone four and zero already. And well, let's hope they let's hope they find a way to win. Uh, at least one of the next two. Yeah, and isn't it an odd stat that the Mets have not won four games in a row until yesterday? That makes kind of, I don't know if it makes it more impressive to record or what, but we'll have to see. They aren't streaky, they're consistent. That's what it really is. They've only lost two games in a row twice. They're 14 and two coming off a loss this season. And they just picked up their first sweep over the weekend. Like, it's just like they're just they keep winning series. They've yeah. only lost one, one series to this date. We're, we're in June starts tomorrow. Um, they're just a consistent team. And they've dealt with injuries and adversity already. But they have flexibility right now with the lead and with some of the depth that they have to, you know, be careful and cautious with Nimmo's wrist sprain and, and McNeil's legs and and whatnot. So, there are certain things they need to manage and, and maintenance, but they have, you know, the bandwidth to do so. Yep. And, um, you know, it's uh, hot out tonight. And uh, yesterday uh, was Memorial Day, and I got a chance to get out to my uh, grill, and you know what I did. I grilled up some Feltmans. And, of course, you saw the video last week. I came out with a video where I grilled up some Feltmans, uh, and uh, Feltman is America's first and original hot dog company. Yes, that's right. Charles Feltman invented the hot dog. Feltman is a veteran-owned business, which was revived in 2015 by two Brooklyn brothers, Joe Quinn, a former Army captain, and his brother Michael. And he did so to honor their late brother Jimmy, who was killed in the September 11th attacks. With a team of military veterans that collectively served over 110 months in combat, Feltman is now one of the fastest growing natural food companies in the United States. They're 100% beef. All natural hot dogs are available for purchase online at Whole Foods. And at Whole Foods, you know, you go to Feltman's.us, get the hot dogs, and they ship super fast. And they'll be the perfect addition to your next cookout. So remember to use promo code FRANK and receive 10% off all Feltman's products at Feltman's.us. That includes the bratwurst, the hot dogs, and the bacon. So you'll be bringing home the bacon. So use promo code Frank for 10% off all items at Feltman's.us and allow me to be Frank is presented to you by Feltman's. Yes, we are. And Frank, speaking of Memorial Day, uh, talk a little bit about your weekend. How how'd everything go? I know you had a lot of things going on. Yep, I went down to DJ's. I was supposed to have a, a, a longer appearance on uh, 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 Evan and Craig, but uh, there was a storm rolling in, so I kind of got bumped. But I made like a, a quick appearance. Uh, there was a race. Uh, they asked me to be in a race, but I uh, I wisely chose not to run. Besides, I would have finished last place like the Jets. <laughs> and then that one guy, that one guy, face planted. Oh my God! Who was in it? Anyone of note? Any any anyone? Evan. Evan. Oh, Evan was in the Ed, race. Yeah, Evan against a couple of fans. Oh, that's funny. How'd you like DJs? Uh, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty wild place and 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 a very popular. I didn't get a really. Ch- I was gonna do a hot dog review, but then the rains came, so that kind of washed that out. I'll have to get down there again. Yeah, it's it's going to be a, a fun place to be all summer. Yep. The uh, the, uh, the, the it's 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 really hot today. Yeah. Uh, we had a, You know what I liked on uh, I went to the Mechim on Saturday. Uh, that rainstorm, that that was like something else. It like like they didn't stop the game. I was expecting them to put the tarp on the field, but um, it was more of a cloud burst, and it was like the rain started like uh, like in left field and like moved across the field, and then 
all of a sudden, uh, Jeff McNeil hit a three-run homer. Yep, after seeing an eagle. <laughs> Jeff McNeil is, is a strange bird. He sees eagles. He sees raccoons. Yeah. And, and now he's doing that, uh, doing the, uh, what you would call it, the living the dream dance. Yeah, uh, Chaz from uh, Wedding Crashers. It's living the dream. His mom, mom makes him meatloaf every night. <laughs> you know, Lindor told him that he'd buy him a car if he wins a batting title, right? Really? Yeah, we were in we were in Philly uh, in the post game locker room uh, in the post game in the clubhouse, and uh, I believe it was after the the big comeback in the series opener in the ninth it, inning. You know, I think if he if he It's like he's been hitting. He has. He's capable of doing it. I mean, when he became pull happy last year, I don't. I. I still don't understand what the fuck happened to him last year. He was so bad. He said a lot of it was tinkering with his swing. I think. I think just the overall approach on the team was just brutal. Because this this offense is very very disciplined right now. You could see it. They really they don't chase. They they do damage on the pitches that they should be doing damage on, which is something we didn't see last year. No, no. I mean, last last year they fell behind three nothing in the first inning. You could basically turn your set off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Last night they're down three to nothing to the Nationals, and uh, and and they wound up scoring twelve unanswered runs. I mean, it, it, it it's it's a lot different. And they and they didn't they they do they they get a lot of hits with runners in scoring position, and they're not home runs. They're not. I mean, um, how many teams are so reliant on a home run that if they go into a little bit of a power drought, they're dead? But the Mets, what are they, like ninth in homers, eighth in homers? Yeah, they haven't hit that many. Even Pete Alonso is having an MVP caliber year, and he only has 13. Well, no, that's a lot. That's a lot in the league right now, but it's something that you wouldn't think before the dead baseball era. You wouldn't think 13 was a lot at this at, at, by June. It's decent, well, but it's... It's more normal. It's it's what I used to what I grew up with. Yeah, well that's true. But yeah, I mean Alonso still will probably hit forty homers this year, and and right now I think he's on on pace to drive in like hundred fifty some RBIs, and Lindor's on pace to to score one hundred twenty runs and and drive in one hundred twenty RBIs, which is like historic. Uh, well, this is the Lindor I expected. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not asking him to be a world class hitter. But 260, that, that's perfect for him. Yeah, with an 800 North OPS of 800, like, I think that's, you know, that, that's all you can ask for. And, and, and close to 100 RBIs and close to 100 runs, like, or maybe more than that, like, that's, that's exactly what the Mets need. He's, he's really been hitting well for, for a couple of weeks now. Which his month, the month of May, he was 9 for 60 to begin the month. He was really struggling. And now he's driven in close to 30. He's driven in 25 RBIs in the month. And Pete Alonso's driven in 30 runs this month. I mean, uh, they, they, they really are doing everything that I really hope. And I just hope nobody gets hurt. I mean, I, it, I, I really wish that Scherzer was still healthy. That would make me really actually feel good. And so where, are you, where are you right now? Where are you right now with your feeling about the team? Cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic. Pretty soon you might run out of things to be negative about. At least right now, it seems like. Yeah, but I'll still find something. <laughs> I'm a nit- I'll be nitpicky. You are nitpicky. That, that's definitely true. I, what mean, were you, I mean, what were you mad about last night? What, what were you mad when it was 12 to 3? Uh, I forgot what you tweeted. Do you, do you remember? David Peterson throwing balls, walking people. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I mean, he didn't look great last night. He really didn't. But the offense is just you have so a, hot right now. You, you have a 12-3 lead. Throw fucking strikes. And I bet you Buck Showalter felt the same way I did. Probably. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm is, sure that he did. Because he yanked him out of the game. He didn't let him get the win. I'd say uh, now... We see Colin Holderman's been very much like 
looks like he belongs in the big league bullpen. But remember I mentioned to you before that there's names that you don't want your pitcher to have? Yeah. I don't think you want a pitcher named Bailey Falter. But you Is do you want one. You want one named Colin Holderman, especially a reliever. Yes, I mean, he did. He, he is the holder man. He is holding the lead. Yep, that works perfectly. And now, who knows? With Drew Smith, uh, he dislocated his pinky trying to barehand a comebacker. Um, <laughs> I got something in common with him. Yeah, let's see your pinky, Frank. Well, it wasn't the pinky that I hurt. What was it? Index. Index finger. I mean, I guess I'm lucky it didn't draw blood, but it certainly didn't feel good. No, no, I can't imagine. And they're just lucky that it was his pinky because he should be able to avoid the IL, no fracture, just dislocation. Like he should be all right either, you know, back in there today or tomorrow. Um, yep. And uh, as a word of warning, do not try to catch a drone. <laughs> oh, what happened with that, Frank? With your drone? Oh, you don't I saw know? it was. No, no, I saw you were flying it yesterday. Yeah, that's why I was talking about my finger. I tried to uh, catch the drone. Oh. And it like like it didn't cut me, it didn't do anything, but it like 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 wrapped around my finger. And my finger is like like got a little bit of a, a little sore. Oh my god, that could have been so much worse than it was. Yeah, so it was like moments I, like after uh, Doug said not to use your finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I was fine at home for the first time. But, but uh, before we get to that, we got to talk about summer a little bit more. And, you know, summer is coming. The sun is shining. And that's why I was out doing my drone. Because the sun was shining. It was summer. And the good thing was my balls were smooth. Now, it's a good thing I didn't fly the drone there. But... You know, we got a certain product that can shave yourself down there and you'll be smooth. That's right. You heard that right. Your friends at Manscaped are here to make sure your beach balls are as smooth as the Floridian sand. In summer, you want to kill cold beers, barbecues, and I was grilling all weekend, by the way, and not kill the vibe with your pubes peeking out of your swim trunks. No, you don't want that. That is why Manscaped has the Performance Package 4.0 to keep departing your pants looking crisp and refreshing all summer long. Dive for, head first into summer by joining the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for hot guy summer by going to Manscaped for 20% off and free shipping with the code TANK. Yes, that's right. Did I mention the trimmer is waterproof too? From the shower to the lake, from your chest scruff, all the way down to your ball throw. Lawnmower 4.0 is the best trim around. Get 20% off with free shipping with the code TANK at manscaped.com. It's 20% off and free shipping with the code TANK at manscaped.com. This summer, turn your package into a full package with Manscaped. Well, yeah, it is definitely beach season, and, and we know it's drone season, Frank, and, and you've already started, begin to indulge, began to indulge in that. Yep, yep. I, the first time I was flying, I've actually had the drone for like several months. I just had, haven't been able to figure out how to use it. And I finally figured it out, got it off the ground, flowed around a few times. And uh, hopefully I'll get out again soon and do a little more practice with the drone as I try to learn how to use this damn thing. You thought of any spots you want to take it to? Uh, and Anything specific? Uh, eventually I want to incorporate it into my hot dog reviews. I kind of would love to know what you have in mind with that. Well, I want to uh, go uh, review the uh, the windmill with the drill with the drone. <sighs> that should be interesting. What, uh, when are you planning on doing that, if if at all? Hopefully, sometime this summer. Uh, you know, be... I actually have uh, I actually have something big uh, coming up uh, this weekend. You're going to L.A. to watch a good baseball team? I'm going to Sweet Home Alabama to watch bad football. Oh, that's happening now. Yep, we're going tomorrow to go watch the USFL. Bad football. 
bad oh. football. You know what, though? You know, uh, you know who one of the best teams is down there? There, uh, there are eight teams in the USFL. There's two teams that are somewhat good. I, I, they're, they're, I mean, everyone sucks. Everyone, every team sucks. They're bad. I mean, it's bad football. But you got two teams that are actually pretty good. You got a third team that is somewhat decent. You got two teams that are better than average. And you got three teams that are an absolute shit show. And is one of the shit shows playing against uh, Birmingham? Well, I don't know. I don't know who's playing this weekend. But the uh, Birmingham is one of the two good teams. One of the two, yeah. You know who the other good team is? Uh, New Jersey Generals. New Jersey Generals. Yep. They only have one loss, and it was against Birmingham. Last minute loss, last second loss. Well, there you go. Uh, now, I think Kyle... And, and, pretty sure Kyle Loletta just signed with the Generals. Yeah, he just joined them. Their other quarterback got hurt. And they kind of missed him a little bit. He did, they didn't play that well the last couple of weeks, but they're still, they still only have one loss. And uh, they're one of two teams that have clinched the playoff berth. Along with Birmingham. Yeah. New Orleans is New Orleans is decent. Tampa and Philadelphia are slightly better than average. Although that might be they might be helped out by just how bad Michigan, Houston, and uh, Pittsburgh are. Especially Houston, who is who loses every game closely. But they're they only have one win. And they've been outscored like by 60 points in the fourth quarter this year. Oh my God. That's so they've bad. They've lost like, they've lost like, they've lost uh, three games literally on the final play. That's like heartbreak and, after heartbreak. And they got outscored 22 to nothing on Sunday in the fourth quarter after having a 10 point lead. Holy shit. So what do you think about the, uh, what do you think about the, the uh, USFL? so far like is it is it is it like actually like enjoyable to watch or like or what do you think it's minor league football if you would go in with higher expectations than that you're going to be disappointed what's the thing that stuck out to you the most about it eh, the teams that are able to run the football win is, yeah there are no good quarterbacks in the league yeah that's what i would expect that there's not we know Kyle Loletta was not a good NFL quarterback, and we know he was an even worse driver. <laughs> and, and he was not, he did not like the traffic in New Jersey, as we know, because he used to drive on the shoulder. That's where he got pulled over on his way to, <laughs> to MetLife for practice. But the, 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 but the generals, generals are, are uh, sure to be in the Final Four. So... Frank, speaking we'll of the final on. four, speaking of the final four, the NHL down to the last four teams. One of them, the New York Rangers. You know, making usual sense of happiness. The Rangers have been winning five. You see, my usual secondary hearing says the Rangers are going to win in five. The Rangers dominated the Lightning this year. They won all three games. They did. In fact, the Rangers, the Rangers have the Lightning number. The Rangers are going to win the series. They're going to be in the fucking Stanley Cup Finals. I don't fucking believe it. Frank, I don't like to hear that just because usually it's the Fleming curse. So when you were saying that the Rangers were going to lose last series and the series before. But my usual secondary hearing has come around. The Rangers are definitely going to win. Yeah, see, this is just the reverse jinx. Frank just wants himself to, like, he knows he's such a curse. But keep in mind, Frank. <laughs> yeah. My, my usual secondary hearing. My usual M-U-S-H. Don't do it, Frank. 
Maybe you'll be. <laughs> maybe you won't be the mush this time. We'll say. I was here uh, at the Met game Saturday night when. Uh, yeah, Saturday night when they won Game Six. And every time the Rangers score a goal, he had to play that goddamn fucking uh, goal song. Which Lindor loves, by the way. <laughs> Lindor wants yeah, the to play something like that when they hit home runs. Are well, they going to find the, 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 what are we going to do? Have home run songs now? That's what Lindor wants. He's a big Rangers fan. Frank, there are some some weird uh, comparisons, though. Like, the last time the Rangers were in the Eastern Conference Finals, it was 2015. They lost to the Lightning. They played the Lightning, and they lost them in seven games. The Mets went on to win the pennant later that year. Mm-hmm. But here, here's one for you. The Celtics have won an NBA championship, and the Mets have won a division championship in the same season twice. 86 and 69. Yep. Well, the Warriors, the last time the Rangers were in the Eastern Conference Finals and the Mets won the pennant that same year, the Warriors won the NBA Finals. Yeah, that was before we got sick of them. I'll give you yeah, one that part. Was, I think it was uh, last time the Celtics had a defensive player of the year and for the uh, All-NBA was the same year they won. Both those things happened. What, uh, I definitely who, want. Who I it? definitely want the Celtics to win. You know, wait. Are you asking? Oh, so, no, wait. What, what K, it, yeah, it, KG got. Uh, yeah, yeah, he got both of those, and then this year was Smart and Tatum. The New York I Giants won the won Super Bowl that year too. Who knows? Oh, that ain't happening. <laughs> Easy, Frank. If the Giants go eight and nine, that would be an improvement. After They're over the under is of Joe Judge. They're over and under. They're over under a seven and a half. I, I, it's too early for me to really look at that right now. Yeah, I mean the NFL is. is I tell you, I actually bet on all thirty over unders in baseball this year. I think I could already cash out that fucking Yankee one right now. Why well, it was over what ninety five? Uh, I put the Yankees in under. Oh my God! What was what was their number set at? Ninety five and a half. I think it's like ninety. Oh, yeah. I, I would say I, probably cash that one out, Frank. I actually was thinking that the Yankees were going to go uh, under five hundred this year. <laughs> When's the last time they even went under five hundred? Ninety one. Nineteen ninety two. Ninety two. Buck Schwalter's first year, by the way. Yeah, when he replaced uh, Stump Merrill. My older brother was born in 92, and he's now, he's turning 30 in July, so that puts that in perspective. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the and it was like, the, the Yankees were, were horrific in 1990. That was like the rock bottom year. Yeah. It was, it was the worst season that they had in like, uh, like since, the worst season they had since they officially became the Yankees. They were they, they they barely avoided uh, hundred losses, and then they lost around ninety again in ninety one, uh, and they had a manager named Stump Merrill, who told Don Mattingly to shave his um, his hit that his hair was too long. They had 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 kind of a mullet. That's right. And he didn't like it, and Don Mattingly was basically ready. He was the team captain and basically says, I, I can't take this anymore. I want out. So they went down to the minors and picked a guy who was washed out as a player, never made it as a player, but was like an up-and-coming manager. Yeah. Who was a friend of Don Mattingly from uh, his playing days. They both played like uh, – like, uh, they both played minor league baseball together. They were like minor league teammates when Showalter was still playing. Yeah, and that's, that's why right. they showed Show Walter. They showed Show Walter to play Kate Don Mangley. In the '92 season, the Yankees finished below 500. But you know, they, you, you could actually sense that they were starting to get better. And in '93, they actually uh, were in the pennant. were uh, were in a playoff chase until the uh, September. 
94, they were like the best team in the American League. And then uh, obviously the strike ruined yep. the season. And the 95, they, yep. they won the first ever AL wild card spot. Um, Frank, funny enough, last time Buck Showalter managed in New York, Rangers won a cup. 1994. Nope. The Devils won a cup. The Devils, when did they start? No, they, they won in 99, correct? 99, 2000, 2003? And they also won 1995, which was Buck Showalter's uh, oh, his last season. final season. Yeah. The Yankees only won with the wild card. So the Devils won the cup. Well, that ain't happening. That was weird. Yeah, well, it's basically it was the Eastern Conference Finals in 94 is a team that had to lose before they had to learn how to win. And the Devils basically outplayed the Rangers most of the series, but the Rangers won two games in double overtime. Well, it, it reminds you of the 2015 Cubs when the Mets swept them in the the uh, NLCS, and then they wound up winning the World Series the next year. It's like they had to learn how to lose before they won. And the, uh, the strike year, there was actually a lockout in 95 in hockey. 48-game uh, season, the Devils basically had a mediocre regular season. But, like, boom, turn it on in the playoffs. So with Close the strike, Boston Garden. With the strike, was that a Close. Would, you consider, would you consider that a Mickey Mouse Stanley Cup, Frank? Nope. <laughs> they uh, they closed out the Boston Garden. Uh, took the uh, Bruins down in five. They uh, they actually played better in the playoffs on the road that year. The Devils. They set a record for. Most road playoff wins. They, they won the first two in Boston, lost game three at home. Then Randy McKay scored a overtime game winner in game four when he tried to climb the glass. Then they uh, won game five, the final sporting event ever at the Boston Garden. Then he lost game one to the Penguins in the next series. And that's the only road game they lost in the playoffs that year. They won the next four games, closed that series out in Pittsburgh in five games. Then against the Flyers, won the first two in Philly, lost the next two at home, won game five in Philly and game six at home. And then they won, uh, they swept the uh, Red Wings, winning two uh, in Detroit. So they won three, uh, five, eight. They won uh, 10 road playoff games that year. Or what was – hold on. Two against the Bruins. At, uh, they won three against the Bruins on the road. They won two against Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah, the 10 or 16 uh, wins in the playoffs were on the road. They went 10-1 and one on the road in the playoffs that year. What was um, – what was – the Carolina Hurricanes were 10-0 and 0 this postseason at home until last night? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did they, uh, they were seven and zero at home. They were seven and zero at home, and the Rangers gave them the big, and, big, big fat loss. And zero and six, and zero and six on the road. Yeah. I was talking to people who were, were like at the uh, Penn Station on the way home Saturday, and you see, as a uh, ran into Ranger fans who were still hanging around the uh, get ready to go back home to New Jersey after the uh, game on Game Six there, and. They said they couldn't figure out why the Rangers are having such a problem at home on the road in the series. They said it's not it's not the Rangers, it's the Hurricanes. They can't play on the road and they dominated home. Yeah, and then they didn't show and, up last night at home. Nope. Nope. They, they I mean the Bruins didn't belong on the ice with them. The Bruins are a team that is basically done. The Bruins might see if the Bruins are smart, they they blow up the team this, this offseason. Yes, they're about a year or two away from being really bad. Yeah, I would agree with that. <clears throat> Frank, Chris Kreider has... Uh, be, I was going to say, Kreider because, has, I think, the second most goals in elimination games among active players. It's either first or second. Yes, the, the Bruins right now is, you got the Bruins, they, 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 went to two, they went to three Stanley Cup finals, we're a top team in the East for the last decade. They won, they won a championship in uh, 2011. And 
it that window is shut. It, it's sealed. And I think the Marshawn uh, Patrice Bergeron era is is basically done in Boston. And that that they're now heading on the, the back end of the career. And if they're not careful, they're gonna end up like Chicago, hanging on to uh, the ghost of uh Jonathan Chase and Patrick Kane. Yeah. And not getting prospects and getting better. Yeah, I'm expecting. I mean, Kevin Devils Mitchell. did that too, and the Devils had the Devils had did that too in 2012, and they did make one more Cup run, but they've paid for it the last decade of just being atrocious. Yeah, it really has been a wasteland for the Devils, um, and that actually that brings us into uh, I guess would be now be a good time to go and ask the tank, but. Um, Thursday actually had a question about the Devils, Frank. And and while we're on the topic, I think it would be a good time to to get into it. Um, he wants to know when will the Devils be ready to compete this year with Lindy Ruff, or uh, when will they be ready to compete with Lindy Ruff as their head coach? When Lindy Ruff is fucking finally fired and uh, they realize <laughs> he sucks. Yeah, I mean it's kind of crazy that they held on to him, and the Nets held on to Steve Nash. But then you see a guy like Barry Trotz lose, lose his job. Well, Steve Nash is Steve Nash, and, and the Brooklyn Nets are, are actually thinking about tra- trading KD and Kyrie. And the only reason they keep Steve Nash is to placate those two, but they're not placating them enough because Kyrie wants a fucking contract extension and is four fucking years in the Nets have been awful. He wants a con. He wants a multi-year contract extension. His first year. He played half a season and said, you know what? Durant's recovering from Achilles injury. I'm not going to waste this year. I'm going to just sit down the rest of the season. Then he had his second season where he took uh, a couple of mental health breaks, uh, got a uh, little boo-boo in the postseason and decided to shut it down. Then he had this year where he didn't get the fucking vaccine and he was out half the fucking season. (laughs) And he wants a contract extension? And Kevin Durant is upset that he's not getting a contract extension, and the both don't want to be traded. Yeah, it hasn't uh, you worked know, out. I'm about done with the fucking NBA. <laughs> These two fucking divas. Uh, I, I mean, this sport sucks. The league sucks. The NBA fucking sucks. And the playoffs have not been great this year at all. I think it'll be a good say you, matchup. Yeah, I don't know about that. It's kind of like, I like the two styles of play. It's kind of like a ballet offense of the Warriors and the Celtics defense kind of just like a crash symphony. I think that will be make for at least good basketball after the atrocious conference finals. Yeah. For both sides. But um, I'm just so done with the NBA right now. Yeah, especially how good the, the NHL playoffs have been great, so... I think uh, I think uh, the Western Conference Finals will be no, will be entertaining. Frank, you still feeling good about the Avalanche? Yes. So, what do you think? You think you think it'll be Rangers Avalanche in the Cup? Yep. And then what? You who was your pick? It was you think the Avalanche are going to win it all? Yes, they do. Well, then if the Fleming curse holds up, then Rangers might be breaking their curse. Oh God! Can you really? Well, you know, you, there's been no. Can you call it a curse from '94? The Rangers haven't won in 28 years. I mean, that's not. I think you call the Maple Leafs having a curse, and 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 some well, of the you, other teams, yeah, but. They, the, Ma- the Maple Leafs thing is just now gotten to the point of absurdity. This would be like the Dallas Cowboys. And they're now halfway there, actually. 26 years. This would be, li- this would be like the Dallas Cowboys going 55 years without going to a Super Bowl. And the fact that the Cowboys haven't even been to a uh, conference finals in about uh, 25 years as well. It's, it, 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 it's stunning. And the... Uh, the Maple Leafs haven't been to a Stanley Cup final since expansion. The last time the Maple Leafs played in the Stanley Cup final, there were six teams in the league. Yeah, that's so bad. 
And they and uh, they've had some infamous moments in the playoffs. There was a game against the Devils uh, 20 years ago. I think it was 2021, uh, 2001, where uh, they got they, they they only got six shots on goal in an elimination game. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it was three, two, one. So they got three shots in the first period, two shots in the second period, one shot in the third period. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, I, I actually think that is the NHL record for fewest shots on goal in the game in a, in a playoff game. Yeah, it probably is. Uh, uh, <laughs> and one shot on goal facing elimination in the third period. God. Frank, uh, before before we wrap up here, um, we do have a, a couple more asked the tank. Um, Andrew Moss at Andrew Moss underscore FL. When do you think Drew Smith will come back and how will the Mets fill his role until he does come back? It sounds like he's not going to miss much time, so I guess he'll be back day or two. Yeah, well, I guess let's let's play, I guess, a, a little bit of, uh, you know, take it a step further here and say that maybe he's not ready to go. So if that were to happen, what do the Mets do there? I guess we'll see more Colin Holderman in uh, Nagosik. Yeah, and, and, and they're going to need those guys to step up, it seems like, even if Drew Smith is OK. These numbers that players have these days is so weird. It's so weird looking at someone pitching with a number 85 on his back. Yeah, it definitely is. Definitely is. And then the last one we have is from John Fullen at Johnny Fo 85 saying, what's your favorite Petey Pablo song? Petey Pablo? Yeah, he said, North Carolina, come on and raise up. I have no idea who Petey Pablo is. Yeah, I figured that it was like an inside thing between maybe that he was asking you. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what he means by that either. I have no idea who Petey Pablo is. Well, there you go. Um, and, and on that note, before we uh, before we end things, Frank, you took an edible last week. How was that? It wasn't that bad. What did you feel like? I felt a little tired, but that's about it. And you were spelling people's names backwards on the yak, were you not? Yes, I was. I <laughs> reminded me, I was thinking about uh, uh, Harry Carey. He used to do that. <laughs> did you get hungry? Like, did you get? Did you order any special food or anything like that? Like, like, what was the whole experience like? Uh, I went over to Stu's. We went to Puncellas. Oh, that and was basically insane. ate like kings. Oh my god! Yeah, what did he get? He got like a ton of food for you guys, right? Yeah, it was like they just kept bringing food out. Oh my god! They had this. Uh, they had this like uh, short rib that was really good. So you do it? Would you do it again? Yeah. Because they gave you, I'm pretty sure they gave you what? I got, it was a 10 milligram or 20 milligram brownie. It was something pretty yeah. strong. It was 10 milligrams. 10 milligrams. Yeah, but it was a, it was a gummy. Oh, it was a gummy. You took a gummy. Okay. Yes. And did you know? Did you notice like your head or neck or limbs were like felt heavier? No. No, you didn't feel that. Okay. I still love that mashup that they made of you before you before you took it. There's like a, I don't know if it was the yak that did it, but there's like a mashup of you like just seeming like just high like all the time. Like it, it, it's pretty funny. And on that note, I guess um, Mets will be going for another series win tonight. I'm um, about to head out there to City Field. Uh, um, Remember to follow Frank at NJTank99, podcast at Frank the Tank Pod, uh, Reed at Reed Miller 515, Mikey at Real Mikey Betts, myself at Regazzo Port, Nick Buono at Nicky the Good, 
And remember to rate, download, review, and subscribe. Frank, if you have any music to take us out with, please, by all means, take it away. Well, I'm heading down to Alabama, so I, I guess maybe I should sing. A, a, let me see. Hold on a second. Da, 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 da. <laughs> As I head down to Alabama to watch some bad football, let me see. Big wheels keep on turning. Yes. Carry me home to see my kid. Sing songs about the Southland. I miss Alabama once again. I didn't get to sing. Well, I heard Mr. Young sing about her. Well, I heard old Neil put her down. Well, I hope Neil Young can remember. A southern man don't need him around anyhow. I say, sweet home Alabama, where the sky is so blue. Sweet home Alabama, Lord, I'm coming home to you. In Birmingham, they love the governor. Boo, hoo, hoo. Now we all know what you can do. Now Watergate don't bother me. Does your conscience bother you? Tell the truth. I say, sweet home Alabama. Click like and subscribe. And see you next week. Where the skies are so blue. And I don't know if I'll, where I'll be, but I'll be here. And have a great day and a great week. Hopefully the Mets can keep on winning. Sweet home Alabama, watching bad football on the field. I'll be one of a hundred in the stands. Go Generals. <laughs>